Hello gorgeous, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a good old fashioned blush ranking video. In fact, this is my very first ranking video ever. I have never done a ranking video, so this is my first. Welcome. I asked you guys in my community tab a couple weeks ago how you would prefer to do a roundup videos. I myself enjoy roundup videos. It kind of gives me an idea if that person that I watch truly enjoyed a product or not and kept going back to use it, or if it was kind of like, yeah, one and done kind of situation. I asked you if you preferred a semi-annual roundup, a monthly roundup, or a quarterly roundup. Me, myself, I don't care for monthly roundups. I feel like they're just a little too much. It's too much makeup too much at one time it gives me well it makes me feel a little anxious and overwhelmed I think the sweet spot is quarterly and the majority of you agreed with me you'd like the idea of a quarterly roundup doing it based on the the seasons winter spring summer fall this video is just gonna be the blushes that I tried this year that I have either purchased this year or just launched for 2024 I have 30 total so the goal here, I'm going to be ranking cream and liquid first, and I combine those because I'm not big on cream and liquid blushes, and then I'm going to do powder blushes after. And then moving forward, my ranking videos will be based off of what you guys voted on, which will be quarterly. For all of my cream and liquid blushes, I don't have a least favorite. I'm going to be ranking these in order of least to most favorite, but I like every single one of these. I don't have a dud at all in these 10 blushes. Starting off in 10th place, it is the Give Beauty. This is the Dewy Plump Collagen Cheek Tint. I have mine in the shade Purple Irises. Purple Irises. <laughs> the formula is beautiful. I find the shade to be lovely as well. It's, it's a beautiful texture. It's not the easiest one to work with. I, ne I need to work with it a little bit quicker. It's lovely, the price point is great. You get quite a bit of product in here as well. I have a video for this blush in particular, mostly because it's a purple color and I love my purple shades, but this is where it ranked. Just in general, it's not one that I reach for over the others and I think there are a couple others in this lineup that are just a little bit better. Number nine might surprise you. This is the Dior, let's see, Glow Maximizer. I have mine in the shade pink just pink. I thought I would like this quite a bit more. I do like it more than the Give Beauty. It's got a lovely luminosity to it and it's it's got enough pigment that I can use it as a blush but it just doesn't quite do it for me as much as I was hoping it would. It's absolutely stunning. I'm not really taking the price of these blushes into consideration in my ranking because quite frankly it's my money and I'm gonna spend it the way I want to. However, just so I and transparent with you. I purchased every single blush here. This I think is a more flattering shade than the Give Beauty and I love the luminosity to it. I don't need a highlighter for it but both of these require me to set them in some way. I just it's ranking a little bit higher but also not as high as I was hoping. Coming in at number eight and seven are the new Lawless Cream Blushes. These are called the Pinch My Cheeks Soft Blur Cream Blushes. I have mine in the shade Angel, which is just a very gorgeous neutral tone. I love it, it's beautiful. I prefer liquids over creams. It's ranking slightly higher than the other two. It just, it's not really a formula that I'm gonna reach for as often as some of the ones that are ahead of it. The other one I have here, Cherry Pie. I just feel this one, I have. I don't think I've worn it on camera. I've definitely worn it, but, and you can see my little sponges. I just feel like this one is super bright and super fun, but it shears out lovely. I can get away with it as long as I am a little soft handed. I can make it work for my skin tone. They're very beautiful. Now the, the shade Angel is quite a bit more flattering for me but I love this shade of pink. There's something about the undertone I like more. So Cherry Pie is a little bit higher ranked, but honestly, they go together. The formula is the exact same. They're just absolutely beautiful. And as much as I prefer liquids, this one, they just, they're a little bit easier to work with than the Dior and the Give Beauty. Six, five, and four are the Armani Luminous Silk Cheek Blushes. 
these are stunning. I originally purchased two shades. It was the pink shade, well, it doesn't say, 53, and then the shade 62. Those were the two shades I purchased first, but because I liked the formula so much, I went ahead and picked picked up 50.2 and I think that one's just a peach color. So for these two shades, the least favorite of the three, but I mean, I love them all. The least favorite of the three is number 62. I love it. It's beautiful. Just wear it's ranking color wise. Formula is absolutely stunning. You have so much time to work with these. They don't dry down too quickly, but they also, they don't stay super sticky and tacky. Then we have shade number 50.5, which I don't really understand how they, how they label these, but I love the summer, like spring summer color. It's stunning. I just think it's really cute and healthy, fun color. And my favorite of the three is number 53. This is that cool toned baby pink shade, also a little bit more sheer, and it's just so flattering. I should swatch these differently, but it's it's similar to the Give Beauty, only I prefer that undertone more. I say similar, but really like that's quite a difference, isn't it? Just, <laughs> I just prefer this one quite a bit more. Formula wise, these are just amazing. Can't go wrong with them. However, oddly enough, there is a liquid blush in this lineup that I still like even more. Coming in at number three, you have never seen me use this on my channel, but this is the Natasha Denona Berry Pop Cheek Trio, the cream blush in here. It is a cream to powder, I think it is, but it's listed as cream blush on here. I love it. It is just so beautiful. It's one of my favorite of the trios that she has ever launched. I am smitten with that undertone. It is just so fun. It's meant for meant for deeper skin tones, but I can still get away with it if I use a very light hand. And honestly, majority of these, some of them would probably be more flattering on deeper skin tones. But if you just use a light hand and you buff it out, if you overdo it, you can make any of these work for you. And this one is no different, but I think of all of the cream formulas, this one is the best of the best. So that one, I just feel like there's a couple other trios. No, no, no. There's only the one other trio, the Dream Trio. This one is slightly different, and I think this one just feels better, but this one launched this year. I picked mine up, I think it was in March, and I've only used, I've only used the cream, yeah, the cream blush here. I haven't actually touched these two. And I don't know why I haven't touched them, but I didn't. Blush number one and two was so difficult for me. I was kind of back and forth with them, but I'm set. Number two is the Suku Cream Touch Blush and Lip in the shade SO2. This formula is just heavenly. It's not a cream to powder formula like Natasha Denona. It's more of a true cream. This is so much smoother than the Lawless, but there's nothing wrong with the Lawless. That is still smooth. This one, I just feel like there's something magical in this pot. I adore the formula. I feel like it gives you so much time to work with it. It kind of melts on your finger and then just blends out so easily. Like it doesn't, when I haven't touched it, it looks like just a dry cream. It looks lovely. But when you touch it with your finger, you can build up how much opaqueness you want or sheer it out. It's just lovely. I, I need Suku to create an entire lineup of these blushes. The pot's slightly too small for my liking. I prefer something just slightly larger to put my hand in or to put my brush or sponge in. But I love, love this formula. They knocked it out of the park with this one. I just wish these were accessible in the US, but man, they did good. They did so good. I hate that they're limited edition. That's the caveat with this one is they're limited edition, but if they're in stock, it will be listed down below. If they're not in stock, like it just won't be. But I'm sorry. Coming in number one is my Huda Beauty blush filter. I have mine in the shade Cotton Candy. I am in love with this formula. When I tell you that this one just caught me off guard and I was just so smitten with the formula, the texture, how it blends, it's, it's easy to work with, it's not too quick to dry down, but it does dry down, it's so blurry. 
This thing is, honestly, I love it more than the Armani. The Armani blushes are stunning. I still have yet to pick up two more shades. There's like two more I've been eyeing that I definitely need to get, but this one is my favorite of this entire lineup. I just find the liquids are easier to work with. I love it. Whatever Huda did with this one, man, this is an underrated formula. Well, not really underrated because social media took off with this one and I think deservedly so because it's incredible. I need to pick up a couple more shades. I definitely will be, but if you have not tried this one, you are missing out. This thing is just amazing. I have a video on this if you're curious about it. It will be linked down below. Stunning, stunning blush. For powder blushes, I have separated these into the glowy blushes, like they have shimmer in them, visible shimmer. They're just really glowy. You don't need a highlighter versus the matte and less glowy. They're a little more luminous as opposed to glowy. So I've separated them like that because I tend to reach more for the matte or the slightly luminous over the very heavily like glowy shimmery type blushes. There are 20 blushes in total, and for this segment, there are eight. Starting off with my least favorite of this lineup, it is the Rare Beauty Powder Blush in the shade Cheer. I forget the actual name of this though. I don't think it's, it's, I don't think it's called Powder Blush, but I cannot remember the name of it. I just have mine in the shade Cheer. I just, I was not overly fond of this. I feel like for this type of blush, I would wear it more as a topper. And I, I wasn't that impressed. Formula wise, I just was not that impressed. I didn't feel like this could stand alone as a blush because it's so glowy and there wasn't enough base pigment to it without building it up. And I don't want to build up this type of formula to make it have that punch that I'm looking for. Punch, definitely. It's like, I need a little more color and this just did not deliver. Coming in at number seven, we have the new Fenty Beauty Hot Cheeks Blush. This one is in, ooh, I dropped something. This one is in the shade Fresh Peach. I thought this one is a lovely formula. It really is, but it is very similar to the Rare Beauty, just so bright. That duochrome shift is just, it's really strong. It's got a very strong orange glow or peach glow, I guess. You can see that as I swatch it and I'm building it up right here, but the shimmers are a little bit larger than the Rare Beauty and it just wasn't as flattering for my fair skin. This one is the lightest shade of the three that launched. They are limited edition. I don't know. This one, it stands alone as far as pigment. It just, there's something about it that didn't wow me as much as I was hoping it would. Part of it could be because of the strong shimmers that are in here, but also, ah, I just felt like it was more of a highlighter on my face than it than it was a blush. It was so beautiful though, just, I had to tone it down quite a bit. I, I really wish this came in an even lighter shade that was a little bit more flattering for fair skin. Coming in at number six is the Addiction Tokyo. This is the blush. This is a pearl shade called Nudist Beach. I think this one is a stunning formula for a shimmer form formula, not form, for a shimmer formula. This thing is lovely. It's flattering on my skin tone. It doesn't have huge glitter chunks to it. There's a little bit more base pigment that gives it that blush type of feel and look that I'm going for. Without being a super strong highlight, I just feel like this one is so much smoother and easier to work with than the other two. It doesn't accentuate as badly as the Rare Beauty. And it doesn't have a strong shift, well actually no shift really, as the Fenty Beauty. Number five is one of my favorite formulas. This is the NARS Light Reflecting Blush. This is a limited edition, still in stock right now. This is in the shade X Appeal. It has a lovely luminous finish. It's similar to Nudist Beach, but slightly lighter. Like you can see there's a little bit more oranginess to the Addiction Tokyo Nudist Beach and a little bit softer peach. For NARS and I feel like this one is slightly more flattering for my skin tone because it's so much lighter. I say so much like it really is that much but it, it, it's not. You can tell they are similar just Addiction Tokyo is deeper. This one is just a formula that I know and I love and I have always loved and I just I feel like I can get away with wearing this one without a highlighter and it still looks really flattering. 
three and four are the M Cosmetics Heaven's Glow Blushes. These are the new limited edition Radiant Veil Blushes. One in Seraph and the other in Elysium. I did film these. That video, I hated that video. I was way too hard on myself, so I never did upload that video. I just was not fond of it. I feature these blushes in that video that I won't be uploading, but this is the one that I would rank at number four. It has a pink with a lilac undertone. It is gorgeous. I like this one more than the NARS just because these are the colors that I gravitate to. The NARS is a, I would say, a more pleasing formula overall for the you know majority of people, but the colors here are just so fun. I feel like this isn't as luminous as the NARS and it has a little bit more base pigment. It's not as lilac as I was hoping it would be. The description led me to believe it would be quite a bit more purple, but it really isn't. So that's why this one is ranking number four and the other shade Elysium, I ranked that one a little bit higher. In the video that I filmed, this one took my breath away. The shade is so unique. I don't have a single blush shade this color. It is one of, let me see if I can just swatch it next to it. One of a more neon type of blush. I don't have anything like this in my collection. So I was surprised because the swatches online made me think that this one might be unique to a couple others I have, but there's something about the soft shim, not shimmer, but like lumina, luminosity to this one. Oh my goodness. It just has that subtle, coral undertone to it that is so captivating to me. It's very pleasing to the eye. I couldn't help myself. This one was just so beautiful. So beautiful in a way that it makes me wanna like be a little more creative and colorful. These are definitely blushes that are not for the faint of heart. You definitely have to love color to wanna wear these because they are unique. But the M Cosmetics formula is so user friendly. You can share these out to be very delicate on the skin and nobody would be the wiser. Coming in at number two, it is the RMS blush in the shade French Rose. This one was not a new color. I don't think it was anyway, but I picked it up this year. It is a soft, soft pink and it is the most luminous and stunning shade. I have a couple other shades from RMS, but this one I felt like, let me see if I can swatch it next to Elysium, not Elysium, Seraph. This one is just so beautiful. You can kind of see the similarities in these. Slightly more lilac in this one now that I've swatched it next to RMS, but this is a formula that is, it's very hard for me to describe how unique it is in comparison to these other ones. If I had to compare this one, I would say formula-wise, it's a little bit more like the NARS Light Reflecting. It's not so much like M Cosmetics. It's not so much like the Addiction Tokyo. This one feels more like the NARS Light Reflecting formula, which is probably why I like it so much, but man, this one is flattering. It is so beautiful. You can sheer it out and make this look less opaque. And I just, there's something underrated about the RMS formula. You cannot go wrong with this. If you love a luminous blush, these are great. These are very price friendly. I say that, I say that loosely because really, I mean, <sighs> Spend what you want to spend on blush, but these are amazing. Coming in at number one, it is this Chantecaille Sunstone Blush. I have mine in the shade Energy. I did a comparison video between this one and the Fenty Beauty. This thing, formula-wise, because I'm going to ignore the fact that it is beyond expensive for this, the formula is amazing. Of all of these that I have swatched in my arm here, this thing is just creme de la creme. I packaging I've complained about for God knows how long, but this thing is the most beautiful formula I have ever worked with. I like this formula more than the NARS light reflecting formula. There's something about this baked formula. One, I love baked formulas, but there's something about this one that I can build it up and it still doesn't look heavy. It still doesn't look shimmery. It is just so gorgeous and flattering and subtle. I I want both shades, but honestly, when I've seen the swatches of both shades, because there's a light pink one, once they're sheared out, they look too similar. So I don't think it's worth me spending the 80 plus dollars to pick up the other shade when they really are just probably too close to even be noticeably different on the cheek. 
If you made it this far, thank you for sticking around. Let's do matte blushes. I went on a whim and purchased a whole bunch of Dolce & Gabbana. I was so disappointed by this one. Coming in at number 12, this is the Dolce & Gabbana Cheeks and Eyes Match. I got mine in the shade number four, Cheerful Pink. Nothing about this formula made this a standout product. This is a very plain powder blush. I was disappointed it didn't blend out as easily as I was hoping it would. It turned out patchy. There is a video up on my playlist of the, of the entire Dolce & Gabbana products that I bought. This one was, I think this one was my least favorite of all of the products. This one just disappointed me heavily. There's nothing special about this blush. There's not a whole lot I can say. The component is lovely. It's too heavy for me. I think it needs to be a little bit lighter. It's luxurious, don't get me wrong, but too heavy. It doesn't need to be this heavy at all. This is something like I could knock you out with if I wanted to, but I won't. Coming in at number 11 is the Sisley Le Phyto Blush. I have mine in this shade Rosy Fuchsia. Absolutely beautiful packaging. I wanted to try the Sisley blushes for so long and I finally did. And then when I tried it, I was let down. Much like the Dolce & Gabbana, just plain. It has a very, very subtle luminosity to it. Like very subtle. It's not a flat matte. It just, there's nothing about it that really makes it stand out worth the price tag that it is. I love the little component. It has its own little velvet pouch, the magnetic closure, the zebra print is beautiful. But the formula, the formula is boring. I hate saying that, but it's Sicily. It is stupidly expensive and the formula is just boring. I'm not impressed at all by either of these. Yeah, I still use them and I don't wanna waste my money, but I feel like my money was wasted, let's be honest. There's just nothing about these formulas that makes this price point worth it for starters, but also memorable. Neither of these are memorable for me and I hate that. I want my blushes to really leave an impression on me so that when I look in the mirror, I'm like, oh, I love that blush. I can't wait to use it again. And these don't do it for me. Coming in at number 10 is the Natasha Denona My Mini Dream Glow Blush. It is what it is. Of all of the Natasha Denona blushes I have, and I'm not ranking the luminous one here because I think it's more of a highlight for my skin tone. It's just, it just is. It's just a blush. She has so many better blush formulas and blush shades. These are just... Don't get me wrong, this is an incredible formula. It is so much better than these two, but they're not unique and they don't really stand out and have that wow factor I'm looking for. These just feel like, so there's not a whole lot I wanna say about it because I still like it and it's great for travel. Like this thing is perfect for my travel bag. Just, eh. At number nine, we have the Dior Backstage Rosy Glow Blush. I have mine in the shade 063 Pink Lilac. This is the first and only Dior Backstage blush I own. I love my Dior products. If you've been watching me at all, you know I, I love Dior. It's one of my favorite luxury brands. Most Dior products work for me. There's nothing wrong with this blush. It just, it didn't do anything for me. It's a beautiful shade. It has an interesting scent to it. There's just really nothing about it that made it stand out. Well, the color is much prettier than the Natasha Denona, which is why it's ranking higher. Oh wow, did I like hard pan that? I think I did. I must have hard panned that at some point. Let me see if I can swatch it off the corner. I love how light that it is because on my fair skin, especially in the, the winter, it looks even better. I'm having a hard time building this up for swatching purposes. It's like hard painting on me as I swatch it. Hmm, I don't know. On the cheeks, it looked great. In the video when I wore this, it looked flattering and beautiful. It's a standout blush in that I love the luminosity to it, but for some reason it's like hard painting on me. I've got nothing there, I don't, I don't understand. But that's neither here or there because I can fix it. The blush is beautiful, it's so light. If you are very light skinned like myself, it's nice, it really is. I don't have any complaints about that. I just think there are better. The ones I swatched already just don't do it for me, but the ones that I have, the rest of them here on the table, they just are so much nicer. But 
it's it's not as amazing as the D D Dior that I was hoping for. Coming in at number seven and eight is the Kosas Blushes Life. These are beautiful. They are very reminiscent of the Hourglass. I have two different shades here. I have Butterflies and Euphoria. Butterflies is ranking just a little bit lower than Euphoria if I had to rank either of them separately. I mean, honestly, all the ones that I have doubles of, you could just say that they're the same ranking. But for numbers purposes, the shade Butterflies is less so than Euphoria. It is that baby pink with that beautiful luminous undertone. Honestly, it has a little bit more punch than the Dior. And that is always nice, but I guess this undertone of pink is similar to, I would say it's very similar to Seraph from M Cosmetics, but the formula is not the same. Like they're different. This one's definitely a little bit more smooth, not as bright and glowy as the M Cosmetics. It's got a little bit more it's a little bit more matte. It's, it's, I don't know how to describe it. They're not the same. They're same, same, but different. You know, like the shade is similar, but it's more matte than it is luminous. The M Cosmetics is way more luminous than matte. So that's why this one is in this category as opposed to the other. Lovely shade. Just, I like the shade Euphoria quite a bit more. I feel like Euphoria is a bit more flattering for me. It's beautiful. I can wear this for fall, winter, spring, summer, it doesn't matter. It's gonna look amazing. It's similar to the shade Angel from Lawless, the cream blush, but I prefer a baked. Just It just is what it is. So this one's easier for me to reach for. Lovely, stunning formula. Easier on the wallet than Hourglass. Great alternative. Number six and five could go the exact same way as Kosas because they are both NARS. They are matte. They are the revamped formula for NARS. I have two shades here, one in X Appeal and the other in 903 Impassioned. It was a silent launch. There's no mention of it whatsoever on social media. This shade Impassioned, I've worn in a video already. I don't know if that video is gonna be up before this. This one is the new shade that just launched under the radar. Don't know. The shade X Appeal was just like the most beautiful, subtle, just amazing for fair skin. I love it. It was so easy, easy for me to reach for no matter what look I was going for. But then this shade Impassioned, this orchid cool tone pink. Wow. It caught me off guard. I saw it on the website randomly when I was looking for, just looking for the new collection that launched from NARS. They're both leaning more cool, neutral cool. These both work for my skin tone. It's just, if I had to choose, if you just forced me to choose, I'm gonna pick Impassioned. This cool toned orchid pink is leaning a little bit more lavender for me and I, it is just breathtaking. I'm gonna swatch them both. So if I had to rank them both side by side, Impassioned would rank higher. This one is X Appeal. This one is Impassioned. They, they are amazing. If you are light skin, fair skin like myself, these two shades you cannot go wrong with. I know the bright baby pink shades, like the cool tone pinks can be really intimidating and they are very intimidating even for myself, but these, these are very user friendly. The formula is very soft. I don't have the original formula, so I can't speak to that, but you can't go wrong with these. Number four is Tom Ford. This one launched at the beginning of the year. This is the Love Scene Blush. I bought this in January and I love it. It's a warmer peach shade. I think this is an incredible formula. It's a baked formula. Oh, it's so lovely. It's similar to, and there's a theme going on here. You can kind of tell. It is very similar to Euphoria, but not as luminous. And then to the Natasha Denona. I love it. I feel like this is a one to overpriced, but underrated formula. This baked powder formula is incredible. I don't reach for it very often because some of these other tones are just a little bit more wearable and flattering for me. But for summer, this is, this is definitely quite a bit more wearable for summer. So I was actually quite surprised. I remember when filming it, it didn't feel like a winter spring blush. It felt more like a summer blush, but Great formula, absolutely stunning. Cannot go wrong with it, just 
$95 is super steep. However, like I said, this isn't really about prices. It's more of just formula and color story for me. So color story, there's no color story. We are down to the top three blushes of this year that I have tried. And these three were very hard for me to rank. I had to sit down and try to rank them. It was so hard. I was back and forth with them. I rearranged them multiple times, but this is the Westman Atelier. This one was limited edition from last year, but I bought it January. I want to say it was January. Um, I got it on sale and I cannot remember now how much I paid for it, but I remember when I tried it, I was like, dang girl, this one needs its own lineup. The formula is so good. So buttery. One, the embossing is so beautiful and cute. I love the cute little details too. the packaging. It's too heavy. Like the Dolce and Gabbana. These are, I would say these are the same weight. And as much as I've been kind of a butt about the Dolce & Gabbana packaging, I could say the same. If I'm being realistic here, Westman Atelier is too heavy as well. You could lighten this up. People with arthritis, anything like that. This is a pain for everybody who has any type of joint pain. Outside of that though, oh my gosh, I love this color. I love this formula. Look at that rosiness. I like this one more than the Tom Ford because of the shade. I'm building it up. It definitely, <laughs> you can definitely build it up. This is the one I'm wearing on my cheeks today. It's gorgeous. I need an entire lineup of this. I mentioned it in the video where I'm wearing this. I need an entire lineup of this formula. It's so good. I, I am ready for Westman Atelier to just launch this. Stop with the cream stuff and give me this. Number two is the Gucci Luminous Blush. This is in the shade Tender Apricot. I bought the baby pink shade last year. I bought Tender Apricot during the Sephora sale. I already knew I love the formula. That was not an issue for me. The formula is just, it's one of those top tier formulas. Ooh, if you're familiar with the Luminous Blush from Armani, it's very similar, only I bought those last year so they don't get to go in this ranking. The undertone to this is just so stunning. I love it. I love an orange blush. This one is a very happy in between, not too deep to be like the Tom Ford and not too bright like the M Cosmetics one, Elysium I think it is. This thing is just a beautiful flattering shade, but the formula is so good. Oh. I don't wear it enough, but this is why it's ranking in at number two. It's an incredible formula. The packaging is stunning. Most of these I didn't really take into consideration the packaging. It's just, I'm a packaging snob. So I don't really buy things if I don't like the packaging to begin with. It takes a lot for me to break out of that. I am a, I'm a snob, I'm sorry. But this is an incredible, mm, cannot say it enough, great blush. Even if you only have one in your collection, this is worth it. Coming in at number one, Chanel. This is the Les Beiges Healthy Glow, Healthy Winter Glow, because this launched in the winter, I think it was. I have mine in the shade Rose Polaire. It did hard, hard pan on me after, I forget how many times I swatched it, but it ended up hard panning on me and I had to scrape a little bit of that top layer off. Wow, this blush was probably the most incredible surprise of all the luxury blushes that I bought. Formula is even better than the Westman Atelier. Mm, so much better than the Gucci. It took a lot of work for me to rank it. Um, not to rank it, but to rank these three because one, I prefer the luminosity of the Chanel. It is the most beautiful, subtle luminosity. It's not overdone. It's not too matte, not too luminous. It's that perfect in between that I'm looking for. The shade is so beautiful. I could wear this with pretty much any eye look that I want. Whereas with the orange blushes, I tend to do a little more neutral. I, I don't really know what to say. It has that same tone as the, the Westman Atelier, but the Westman Atelier is a little bit more matte. I just love it. I hate that these are limited edition. I don't even know if these are in stock anymore. I'm kicking myself for not buying the other shades, but also I'm sure at some point they'll keep releasing more and I'll end up buying more and I have too many as it is, so it's not like I need them. I definitely, I mean, as you can tell, have too many, so I'm not hurting. <laughs> it is what it is, but 
wow. When I say this one is just like, if you had me pick out one blush out of my entire collection that I could have and I had to give away the rest because of whatever reason, this would be the one I keep. I Over the cream and the liquids, this one. The embossing is gorgeous. The packaging is gorgeous. It's weightier than the solid black packaging. It also comes in that velvet pouch. This one. This is the one that I, I have a hard time not playing with with my entire collection of blushes. And I, my collection, while I don't have a large following, is mine. I spent my hard-earned money on it. So whatever I've spent on that, that's for me. It's mine and mine alone. So I love it. I'm happy with it. If I could only keep one out of this entire collection, it would be this. If you are still here with me to the very end, thank you so much. I appreciate you supporting my channel. As always, everything on my face is listed down below and I love all of your comments. You guys really force me to get out of my comfort zone and think <laughs> because a lot of the times the things I use, I don't put a whole lot of thought into. I just, I know I like something versus over something else. If you had to pick just one blush in your entire collection, tell me what that is. I wanna know. Do something for yourself today because you are worth it. Bye guys.